Hey guys, it's Erica and Jess. And welcome back to Twin R Knits, a knitting and style podcast. So today, before we start anything, I do have to let you know, um, I was so excited about my Italian twisted cast on and I was so pumped and it took forever and it was the worst. Well, let me tell you, I don't know what the heck happened, but I went to bed and I woke up and I worked on it over Easter and I realized, well, shoot, I freaking twisted my stitches. Yeah, that happened. <sighs> so that happened. So I don't have any more progress to show you on the sexy back V-neck. Um, I was so disappointed in myself that I did something dumb, like twisted my stitches, especially after all the hard work. I feel like sometimes when you hyperfixate mm -hmm. on a problem or like to um, avoid a problem, it becomes inevitable that you do it. Oh my gosh. So that was a problem. I had to, I literally knit an entire inch and a half. She did. Of um, twisted rib. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like getting ready and I'm like, let me just double check it just to make sure. Thank God I did. Cause could you imagine? Knitting the whole thing and then being like, uh-oh. That's literally what happened with my one project when I first started knitting. I can't. I know. So um, I had to rip it out. Mm -hmm. and It's in time out And now. it's in time out. I, the thing is, is I love that yarn. Yeah. I want to make it in that yarn because I can see myself using it as like a tank top, as like a summery vest. Mm -hmm. Like, I really want that piece. So sometimes, sometimes I'm really about the object and not about the process because yeah. let that me tell you. That process was hard. I still like, even me, I literally just have the cast on. And when that happened to Erica, I was like, oh, I'm going to need a minute because yeah. I don't want the same thing to happen to me. Yeah. So I need a minute. So I don't really have a deadline and I don't know why I took it so hard. But because I, the Italian cast on took you forever. forever. So I was very, very upset. Yeah. I had to rip it all out. I was very, like, it was to the point where, like, I almost cried. My mom tried to hug me because I was so upset. And mm -hmm. I'm like, you can't touch me right now. I am that upset. Yeah. I can't. Um, so I needed a win. Yeah. This is a long-winded thing to say, A, you're not going to see that project because I ripped it out because I freaking twisted my stitches. And two, I needed a win. So I spun more yarn. Yeah. So um, as I mentioned before, I am trying to spin up enough yarn for a weekender. So I had already spun up, I'm pretty sure it was these two. And I just finished, and I did this in a day. Mm -hmm. I, Easter, no, was it Saturday? It was Saturday. Saturday? Yeah, yeah Saturday. Saturday. All I did was sit on the couch, watch, I have no idea what we were watching. I just sat there all day mm -hmm. and spun this skein of yarn. It's so good. Like, I am obsessed right now mm -hmm. like look at all three of them together they look so good it's gonna make a beautiful sweater like I spun this so do you want the timeline of how long this took because sure. this is wild yeah so the first skein which I'm pretty sure is this one I think um <laughs> so one of these skeins which I'm pretty sure is this one this is the skinniest one took almost two years to spin because mm -hmm. I started spinning during um Tour de Fleece. Oh, yeah. I tried to spin during Tour de Fleece, and I'm like, I don't understand how these people are doing it. And my wheel was in an inaccessible spot in my room. Mm -hmm. um, this took, I can't believe, two years. Then this one took a week. I spun a little bit at a time. And then this one, I spun in a day. Like, what? what? So I hopefully have enough yardage here mm -hmm. for... These are all singles. So the goal is to now spin for the second ply, which I hope I will have enough. And I started to spin that 
to. Mm -hmm. So I've decided that I'm spinning this other half in a coral and then I'm gonna apply it together together to create um, a double ply yarn mm -hmm. to knit my weekender. So even if it comes out DK-ish, cause I think it's gonna come out DK-ish, DK worsted-ish, which is what I need. But even if it's like on the light DK, I'm still gonna knit the original weekender. weekender so it like has air. Yeah. I don't know, but like, That's I'm nice. I'm really like, it looks really good, dude. Look at this. <laughs> I'm so excited. It looks so good. Jess. Okay. Yeah. It looks so good. All right. I just had to like do that whole thing because like for me, I was very disappointed. Yeah. And it looks really nice. I it was know. knitting up really nice. It's, I mean, the, the yarn is amazing. It is. All right. So I spent my time. We're going to recap. I have a back. I have a finished sleeve. I have two finished sleeves. What? When Erica was spinning, I spent the whole day knitting my other sleeve. So all I am missing now is the front. Yeah. And I was gonna take a break and work on my classic, you know, but I don't know how I feel about that now. I mean, I probably should so I can get some some progress on it too but like look at that I have a back and two sleeves I know like, amazing it's almost there like I can I can see the finish line you can taste it. I can taste it I'm like and what I like about this project is because you're like n n working it flat and you like I don't mind purling Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's just like, ugh, you know? <laughs> yes. Like, I don't hate it. It's not, like, the it's worst a, thing. It, it can be. But, like, I feel like it ruins my flow. So, like, I don't even really consider it, like, around, even though it is. Yeah. You know? Because, um, so for me, because I'm weird, um, because I don't consider it around, even though it is, um, when I turn back around to knit it, I'm like, oh, it grew twice as fast. Oh, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, my brain tricks itself. No, I think of it like a typewriter. Think, 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 yep. think, 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 think. Yes, but also no. <laughs> because I'm like, I'm like, because even when you're knitting in the round, because you're just knitting, it just becomes monotonous. But because I have to stop and then I have to, like, switch the way my hands are because I purl oh, differently. Oh, yeah. Like, it it doesn't compute to me that I'm like still working on it because I'm purling. It's like I need to get through this to get back to what I was doing. Yeah. So to me, like I felt like this grew so quickly, like making this sleeve. Yeah. Well, like it's easy when you see a lot of progress because you have yeah. a lot of progress. I know. And then I was like a little bit bummed because I was like, ah, I really, I really, really wanted to do like the hard parts, right? So I wanted to do the back and then the front. Oh, and then do the sleeves. And then do the sleeves. Oh, and now you have the sleeves. And, but because I didn't know how to read the pattern, cause the way the book is like- Laid out. Laid out is a little confusing. Mm -hmm. um, because I have the back portion, then the sleeves and then the front. Mm. And then the rest of the instructions to like Put seam it, it up and do the collar and whatever, which is fine. But like the way I would have liked to work it would have been the front. No, I take it back. The back because you're doing the same cable all the way up. Mm -hmm. And then because I would have already mastered the cable, I would have liked to go to the front, work however many repeats to get the cable where I needed to, and then add the other cable parts. Mm -hmm. You know, because I already have this down in my head. And then after doing the difficult part, relax and do the sleeves. Yeah. But that's not how it was. And the way, like, it was, um, like, put together, like, I couldn't really tell, where, like, what section was which. Because I was just going to go and, like, find the front 
and then work the front first and then the sleeves. Mm -hmm. But um, I kept reading it and rereading it and rereading it. And I don't know if it was just like me being absent-minded and like overthinking the process that I didn't realize where in the pattern it was. So um, that's in my bag. So I just mm -hmm. did it in the order that they had it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, Does yeah, that yeah. make sense? Yes. I'm like, cause I you couldn't tell in the pattern where right. the front so, started. Right. So in the instruction. I, yes, because there is no like there is a thing that says like back sleeves front, but it's all like together. Mm -hmm. So it's not like They're separated not... enough like actual sections Got it. of being like this. It's is all a thing. in one paragraph. Yes, and I think that's that's con that confused me. So I was like, I'm just going to follow it. I was just going to follow it. So I just followed it. And now I'm like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and cast this, the front on. I'm like, and I, I'm excited because I really did enjoy doing this cable and seeing it grow. So I'm, I'm excited to do the other side of it as well, because I saw it on the mannequin when we went to Forever Yarn, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I just want to wear it. <laughs> so that's where I'm at now. I'm like, I'm at the point where I'm like, I feel like I'm just going to put my classic on the back burner and finish this because now I'm full hype on this now, now that I'm like more than halfway done. Yeah. I like, I can see it. And if I work on it, it'll be done. And then I can focus on the other projects. So that's that on my perennial by Nora Gone in the uh, worsted book. And I'm loving the yarn. It's so nice and cozy. And I can't wait to wear it now for spring. Our springs are still cold here. I so. know it's freezing here. All right. So following Jessica's this valentine's day red sweater that's taking us longer than valentine's day to finish yeah but we also said it was going to be oh it's a super, super loose. loose knit along and if there you was want no it, end date. and if you still want to cast a red something on because you just found us or please pink. feel free to join us yeah because it's just a way to work through our stash yes so this is the whole thing right the whole plan is to work through our stash so Making yarn out of my fiber stash. Oh my gosh, I know. Is working through my stash. So like, it's really been interesting to like make it a real point to yes. like actually like work through things. One, work through things and really figure out a way to add creativity yes. into your everyday, everyday life. life. So I want to talk about this and then you can talk about yours and then I want to talk about that. Okay. Okay. Um... So the last time you saw this, it was in, um, I had just split for sleeves. Yeah. So oh, Erica, it looks so good. I have like, what, four inches? Yeah. About. I would say about four inches. Two. Yeah, about yeah, four, four inches. inches. Of body done. Oh, it looks so good. Wait, I See? can even, listen, okay. I can even hold it. Like a regular sweater now. Like, okay, so then, like, I'm over here, like, I'm hyped on this. And then I see Erica's, and I'm like, oh man, I want to do mine, too. Oh, see, okay, so this is going to sound crazy, and Jess might take it out. But <laughs> <laughs> I do get a little happy when I uh, edit. edit. <laughs> um, Jess might take it out, but I have... I've been trying to get better at styling my knits for my everyday life. Oh, that could be a whole other video. Yeah, too. but I mean, I just want to kind of like just say like I changed my glasses to mm. my Chloe glasses. They're very 70s. So like in my mind, like when I wear these with my hair like this, like with like a long curly thing. Um, and I actually am trying to do like a long curly thing and not just like messy curly. Um, <laughs> just like thrown. Uh I kind of think of it as like a 70s secretary, like, like Tootsie or like working, well, working girl is in the nine, in the eighties. But, but you like, mean like nine to five? Yes, but like nine, yes, living. yes. So like, I'm thinking like a working 1970s working, like, you know, mm -hmm. idea in my mind and it's, she's quirky and whatever. And like, how cute is this for that aesthetic? So like my cute. quirky girl. 
Your quirky girl secretary aesthetic? My quirky girl secretary shtick. Like, yeah, I... This would really be cute with those, um, those checkered pants that you wear that you got from Anthropology. The blue ones. Oh, yeah. How freaking cute. And then you can take the sash thing I and, like, tie it in your I hair. I don't even know where the sash is. Oh, well. I was like, you, um, can, you can do it and have, like, a nice so, little... Yeah, but this would be so, like, I just cannot wait. Like, so this is, if you're new here, this is the classic... Mm -hmm. It is a free pattern on Ravelry by Espas Trico. It's one of our favorites. It's one of my favorites. This is the second one I made. Mm -hmm. I'm making. And I'm making another one as well. And, and this is all yarn from my stash. So mm -hmm. this yarn was originally for a different sweater, and I just ordered too much of it. I know I said that before. And then I have some Fashion School Dropout. It's an Ula Johnson color that she had. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm holding it double, and I'm loving the color. Like... It's really Like, cute. look at how, like, healthy I look with this color on. <laughs> I know. Like, sometimes I feel like I look like... But, like, yeah. this I, looks like I'm wearing... Like, a cocoa... all the color is drained out of your face yes, and you look this, sickly. This does not do that. <laughs> no. You look cute. I can't wait to finish it. Um, oh. I can't wait till we're done with this so I can watch Contraband at the border and knit on this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all I'm working on. I'm working on um, this sweater... And I had to undo the other one. I should be working on the scarf, but I'm going to be honest. I've, I've, I've not. You haven't even looked at it. I haven't it. even looked at it. It makes me sad because, like, I love the process and the project and the yarn. And I just need to get it done. But you, this is, like, I'm, like, obsessed with this right now. Yeah. I'm obsessed with but this. But you can I'm have the spinning. scarf be your on-the-go project. I know. And I kind of did. But this is now my on-the-go project. Right. I don't know. But eventually it's going to, once you get to the sleeves, yeah. it's not going to, you're not going to be able to like take it anywhere. I know. And that's um, where I am. I don't have an on the go project. I know. We need to cast on socks. I know we do. So, um, in the last podcast, I mentioned that I pulled together my color palette for my cozy stripes. In here, my Tati Casey bag. <laughs> so, um, I saw Christina wearing her, uh, cozy, cozy stripes, stripes in person and I was like, girl, I freaking love this. I need to make one. I know. And I was full hype. I, full hype. So I was like, okay, obviously I'm trying to knit through my stash. Yep. Obviously. Stash Galore 2024. And um, I'm really, really, really trying to stick to that. But it's almost like a fun challenge. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, ooh, let's see what I can play with in my own, in my own stuff that I already have. So... When I looked at hers, I noticed that I really loved, like, the texture play that she had. Mm -hmm. So, when I came home, I was like, oh, I have this amazing Fashion School Dropout Enid Sinclair colorway that was going to be for another sweater. But I had enough to make the sweater without this. So this was part of my color palette. I think this and when I was re-looking through my stash, I came across this Chelsea Lux. The Oh, I should grab that too. Avon by the Sea with glitter. So if you see, we love Chelsea yarns. We do love Chelsea yarns. <laughs> and the mohair. Because I wanted to use this because you needed it. Mohair. Um, you need mohair. You need, you need mohair. You need sock. You need sock. DK. You need book, a couple of boucles. Fingering. Take, I take it back. You don't need these things. So her kits are set up with like certain chunks to use one of each base. Right. But you don't have to. No. All you really need is like a DK weight. You can... Uh, grouped um, fingering held double fingering held double or just a DK weight or a light DK weight with a fingering or a lace weight um, so you don't need this texture but I that's what I loved about hers so the pattern itself if you get the pattern number one it's super cute it I think it, cute. it is knit in pieces though that's like a Shayna Billow pattern that she does all the time where everything is knit in pieces but the thing that's genius about it is that it's knit in pieces. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I just said that, but like, <laughs> it's so much easier to take it on the go. You yeah. Can, it's, you don't have to worry about it. Like, it's like cast on this many stitches and alternate until you get the stripes, the amount of stripes you want cast off. 
Yeah. Like, it's so easy. That's why, like, I, like, breezed through my Stay Cozy. Oh, I yeah. loved my Something Cozy. That's why I want to do the Stripes one, too. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic pattern. I'm like, so I analyzed what I liked. Oh. Sorry. I was also going to say, sorry. I know. I'm sorry. She, what's great about, also great about the Cozy Stripes is that they actually tell you what to pair with what to get yes. the thickness that you need for each stripe if and you want so you can so, stash so, stash bust so in if yeah if you want to stash bust they have that but also if you want one just like hers they tell you exactly what she used as well which i think is really smart mm -hmm. um but she also encourages you to like play play with anything that you have in your stash so what I've learned to do through this process of stash galore is to analyze what I like about a project and why I'm drawn to it. Mm -hmm. So when, and seeing it in person is like seeing like a Monet in person or a Van Gogh where oh. you like see the details Mm -hmm. I know that might sound too artsy fartsy, but I mean, there is a difference between seeing like, okay, so there's a difference between seeing it on a projection. Yes, that's what I was going to say in, in person, person yeah. where you get to see like the subtleties of it. Yeah. And that's how it is with like, the sweater. Like the sparkle. Yes. So that's the thing, like you and the photo. You don't because see the sparkle. One, you don't see the sparkle. You don't really see like the texture, the, the texture play. Really, you just see the colors. So seeing it in person it is seeing like a painting because you actually get to see the, the, textures, the texture, the stitches. The, the stitches, the sparkle, the textures, um, the fluffy, the, the fluffiness of it all. Um, I know I feel like I'm waxing poetically about it, but it's a great pattern. One, I'm so excited. So this was my starting point. I knew in my head. Do you want me to hold it? Sure. So you can dig out. Yeah. So I knew in my head that this was my starting color palette. And I knew that I wanted to at least hold or have two other mohairs in there. Because this part, this here is going to be my button band. So I'm going to hold this together to create the DK weight to have it be the button band. And then you can also use um, mohairs see. to create a stripe. And I don't know whether or not I'm going to hold them double, like, together to create, like, a fun little marled effect or s held them Separate. separately yet. And then, because we're working through stash, this was actually my first ball of Chelsea Yarns ever. And it's, uh, I think it's, like, birthday cake confetti. It was literally... My favorite thing. I think this this and Alyssa's subliminal dip, uh, what is it? Subliminal messaging that made me like pink because I was not a pink girl until I started <laughs> knitting. Um, so this, a friend of mine dyed this color for me for Christmas, and I thought this would be nice to play off of that. She named it very Perry, uh, because periwinkle was the color at the time. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use for the rest of the stripes. Can I put this down? Yes. Um, all of my different minis. minis from her advent. And I thought they just worked really well together. They're like subtle. And they have like the same kind of hues-ish. You know, but I thought it'd be like a fun, yeah, a fun vibe. So my question to you is, to are you going to, yes, to you, the question to you is, mm -hmm. are you going to do different minis on the body and different minis on the sleeves? Or are you going to like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like decide. Because the front and the back, it's going to be different. Right. Because well, you're going to run out, I think. Um, I don't know. I'm, I was going to play it by ear and have these guys be the grounding. And then have the other ones, whatever it is. And then it have, is. yeah. I think that'll be I fun. Think, I think if I remember from rereading, from reading the pattern, um, it only has like either five or eight rows to mm -hmm. create a stripe. Yeah. So I think I'll have enough to like 
you know, have it in multiple places. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking back to my color play pullover. Yeah. And I had um, my stripes for 15 rounds all the way around. Yeah. But not really all the way around. I right. don't know. But I had some leftover. I had one that did not have leftover. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It'll be interesting to play with that because I'm also going to be casting that on. That's one. I know. That is something I wanted to do during the Easter break because we had three days off. You know what, though? Hold on. I just got really excited because I have another three-day weekend coming up yep. because the eclipse is happening. I know. We are going to be in the um, path of, what is it, totality? Yeah, So, like, I have the day off of work because it's, like, we're supposed to be tripling in size the our population for yeah. this event. Like, mm -hmm. all the hotels are booked and everything. Yeah, um, it's crazy. So I'm like, so excited. So, like, I want this weekend now, now that we're, like, talking about it and realizing that, yes, it is, like, another weekend I know. Thing. I really want it to be, like, a super creative, weekend. fun weekend where, yes. like, I bake a sourdough loaf, I knit the thing. Yes. I wait for the eclipse. Yes. Well, the eclipse is happening Monday. Well, you know. How exciting. I'm excited. I'm excited. I have fancy glasses Me too. for it. I got some glasses. You know, you have I'm like, to. Should we film it? Uh, because not because not everybody is going to be. You can in try, a but you totality. you have to have the glasses on, and you have to have I think the glasses on the thing too. I don't know to see it. You have because it has to filter. Uh, I think because you don't want to look at it through the thing. You might have to film it with the glasses as well. That's fine. We'll figure it out. Um, but I was saying, like, that's part of the creativity talk that I... Not talk, but just like... The creativity talk. It's not the creativity talk, but I mean, after going through art school and being burnt out and like feeling like not creative at all mm -hmm. and not like... And feeling um, like you have to produce, produce, produce yeah, on deadlines. But the, I think that's why this year so far has been so great. Because yeah. we're like, deadlines? Who is she? Yeah. But also, I also think that, like, thinking that, again, going back to, like, being in art school and, like, creating all day. Mm -hmm. Like, we would spend hours in the print studio. Because we yeah. were just so into what we were doing and covered in ink and cleaning up and the whole thing. And you just come out euphoric and... You know, like, or in the metal studio, or when we were sitting around in the clay room and, like, bopping back and forth between mm -hmm. one studio to the other, you know, and you were just creating all day, which was wonderful mm -hmm. and also exhausting, creatively exhausting. Yeah. So, like, finding those moments of creativity, like sitting to spin or sitting to knit mm -hmm. or really thinking about the colors of your next project or even opening up your idea of, like, 15 minutes is not a lot. Mm -mm. So, like, you can do anything for 15 minutes. Like, you could draw for 15 minutes. You can do a quick watercolor study. Like, mm -hmm. finding those pockets of time while you're working full-time is hard. But definitely necessary. But definitely worth it. Like, I'm learning. We're learning Danish 15 minutes at a time. That's you know? True. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's doable, and I feel like finding those little bits of time mm -hmm. is, um, I think has opened my mind in a different way, because we did, a couple weeks ago, we did stay with Kelly and Alyssa, and seeing how those women mm -hmm. do their creativity, like, they're obviously really creative people, they're mm -hmm. always making and producing yarns and dyeing, but mm -hmm. seeing them to actually sit there and, like, sit at the kitchen table and knit a couple rounds mm -hmm. or a couple stitches or whatever, or like live your whole life mm -hmm. and then like sneak away for an hour to be able to do something creative. Yeah. You know? So like that really opened up my mind in a way of like, it's not an all or nothing thing. It's not a, mm -hmm. you have a studio and you're there until you're done. Yeah. And then you come home and then there's no creativity, right. you know? So it's learning to have that creativity. Yes. To keep it constantly going. Mm -hmm. Also with that, I want to say that, you know, Andrew Mowry is doing a 100 day challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I'm going to do it. And I think I'm going to try to do it. Mm -hmm. She wants to do 100 days of long draw. And I'm trying. I'm trying to do it. 
I did a couple of minutes of it trying to do it on here on this thing mm -hmm. and it was definitely different yeah because I I do. do a short forward draw inching my way towards it so a long draw is kind of weird yeah but that's the point right because you I do know. it for 100 days and it becomes you become better at it you get better at the skill and it becomes more like second nature yeah it'll become muscle memory yeah so there's that I'm doing that too mm -hmm. I'm doing all the things Haley from Loch Nitz was selling <laughs> was selling her uh, sewing machine, and uh, I saw it and I slept on it, and then I was like, "No, Jess, I think you need a sewing machine again." So I bought it. I bought a sewing machine. I bought a sewing machine. So we're gonna also be twin Aura sews. Um, <laughs> it's twin Aura. <laughs> crafts <laughs> <laughs> um jk not really but kind of um i'm really excited uh we we sewed before we even started knitting oh yeah so it's like becoming like we are becoming the women we've always wanted to be and that is including like making you know spinning and like knitting and sewing and really finding the creativity throughout your you know your life and time to do it like picking out a fun outfit in the morning yeah for dressing up like a character i used to do that all the time i know and then i stopped and then i'm like wait a minute i want to dress like a character but yeah so i we i mentioned that because um i am going to be documenting my process of sewing um specifically for a set of garments that i will be wearing as a bridesmaid and it's going to be called side quest because um it's a dnd &D themed wedding so i thought it'd be kind of like fun to do uh and now i have a sewing machine for it so stay tuned for that i'm really excited <laughs> about it um it might be a whole colossal mess, but we're gonna do it together. It's I'm really, right. I'm really excited. I'm about excited it. for you. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's been a minute, but I'm excited. You're gonna work with leather for the first time. Yeah, I'm like, I have to paint my shoes. I have to make my dress. I have to make my corset. I'm debating on whether or not I have, I will have time to do like a chainmail thing. Mm, nice. Um. Time. I mean, are you going to make your jump rings, too? The metalsmith in me wants to, but the actual person is like, just buy them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, I don't know. I haven't decided if I want to have that or not because of the way the dress is. I say no. So, I'm going to wait. Think, and I think, I say no. I think if you're going to make a necklace or something, make it not chain mail. Yeah. But that's okay. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I want to see how the dress is because I already have um, my fabric. I have my patterns. Um, and I just want to get it together before I like really finish, finish it. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. Accessories will come later. Yeah. If I have to order something, I'll order it. I'm, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. The dress and the thing is going to be fine. Yeah. I'm excited. I have like scrap fabric for lace i'm really like i'm i'll draw it well it's gonna be a whole thing i'm, I'm really excited, excited for it i'm <laughs> excited i'm like okay i have like four months to get this done so like the anxiety is pumping but it's fine you have We're plenty of time it. i will once i have my sewing machine and yeah. then i'll just do it all right <laughs> done with that we are off and <laughs> we'll see you again in the next one same nitty time same nitty channel bye, bye guys <laughs>